All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to For Ghost Entertainment. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make interactive elements inside of a UI for Unreal Engine 5. So as you guys can see, I have this UI right here. If I go ahead and I press down on my arrow key, you'll see that my arrow that I have within my UI scene actually moves down. And if I press up again, the arrow actually ends up moving up. Now, the interesting thing that I have about this UI system, if I go ahead and I hit the space bar when I'm on try again, you'll see on the top left-hand side that I get a printed string that says new level. So if I go ahead and I open up the UI and then I move down to give up and I hit space you'll notice that I'm actually going to go to a blank scene now this can be whatever you want it could be like your main menu whatever so it's very simple and very easy in order to do this in your game so the first thing you guys want to do is you're going to right click you're going to go to user interface and you're going to create a brand new wizard blueprint I'm not going to create one because I already have a wizard blueprint so the next thing I'm going to do is inside of my wizard blueprint I'm going to get a canvas panel and then right here all I have is I just have a background image and then I have a background blur and then over here I just have the background which is like my UI element that I have I have text in my scene which is going to be deaf is on the beginning I have give up and then you can have this set up however you want when it comes to like this the element of what it, you want your UI to actually read now you want to make sure that you guys have a widget switcher this is very important for being able to sit there and allow the arrow or whatever you want in your game to be able to move up and down and then the next thing you know I have an arrow which is going to be an image and then over here I have another text box which is try again right so once I do that the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my event graph now I'm gonna create a brand new variable and this is going to be an integer and this is gonna be called selected options so once we create that integer variable the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new function I'm gonna click on this little icon right here to create a new function and what you want to call this function we're gonna call the update arrow position and then once we do that we're gonna drag in and we're gonna get our selected options and then from there we want a we want to get a switch on it so what a switch on it is is basically depending on whatever the index of the integer is it allows the system to be able to do a specific thing so arrays always start at zero so if my index is set to zero then on zero I'm gonna do this and then when I get to one within my array I'm gonna do this right so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to get set render translation so in order to get this you just have to type in set render translation and then you just go over here and just get the render translation right and then once you do that we're going to copy that which i'm going to control c control v i'm going to paste it again i'm going to connect this to the one integer um right here on my switch in and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag in my arrow and then i'm just going to drag this in and then i'm actually going to get the arrow and I'm going to sit there and connect it to my target. Now, what this arrow is, is just basically my image that I created. I just renamed it to arrow. So you always want to rename things to things that are like very easy for you to be able to find. So it's not like you scram like, what is this image? I don't know what it is. Just name it accor accordingly to what it is, right? So once I do that over here, now in my translation, um, translation, you can see that I have an X, which is negative 15, and a Y, which is negative 45. Now, where I got these variables from is if we go back to our designer, right, our designer graph, and then I go over to the arrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down, and over here, I have my render transform. So in my render transform, I have my translation, and then what I have in my translation is I have the same values, which is an X and Y. Now, depending on where you move your arrow, for me, if I move my arrow just sitting right here, these are my values, which is going to be negative 15, negative 45. When my arrow is moved down, what I'm going to do is move the arrow down, and I'm going to get those values for my switch on it when it's going to be 1, which is going to be negative 15, but it's going to be y for, for, for y is going to be 286 right so i'm going to get that value once i get that value i want to make sure that after i get that value i go back to, into my um, arrow and i go back to my render translation and i just put it back to what it originally was at because if you don't do that you're going to run into a bug okay so once you figure out what your values are between the x and your y and where you want everything to go with the arrow the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go back to our event graph and in our event graph what I have over here is I have an input action mapping, which is up key. So in order to create an input action mapping, I need to go to edit. I need to go to my product settings. Now, once I get into my product settings, I'm going to go down. And then right here, I'm actually going to click on this little icon right here to create a brand new action mapping. And then for my action map mapping, I have my up key, which is going to be my up key. And then it's going to be my D-pad. 
right and then i have my down key which is going to be my down key and then it's going to be my down d-pad and i have another input action mapping which is select option select option is going to allow us to be able to have a button press that we want to be able to press when the arrow is on like for example try again or give up that is going to have been between the selected option so once you guys go ahead and create those input action mappings the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our input event graph right and then I'm going to get a reference to my input action mapping for my up key. And I'm going to get a reference for my input action mapping for my down key. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drag in my selected option, which I'm going to get a reference to this. And then from here, I'm going to drag off and I'm going to get a decrement. And then from there, I'm going to get a clamp integer. Now, what a clamp integer is just going to basically allow value to be clamped in between whatever you set it to the highest. Like for you, it might be three, four. For me, it's zero to one because I only have two things remember array start at zero they don't start at one so it's zero is going to be one if that makes sense so then the next thing you want to do is after the return value you want to drag off of that and you want to go ahead and then you want to basically get a reference to this and drag it in and you want to set this and then i'm going to set this for the selected options and i'm going to go ahead and connect this up to my return value then once i do that I'm going to drag in my function and I'm just going to sit there and connect my function up to my selected option. And then for me, I have a play 2D sound. What's a play 2D sound just allows me to play a sound when the arrow is moving up and down, right? So now I'm going to do the same thing for my down arrow. The only difference is I'm just going to be getting a increment instead of a decrement so a decrement means i'm going backwards which is minus one and then an increment means i'm going forward which is plus one right so once i do that that is the code to be able to sit there to go into the game if you i press and pull up my um ui and i go up and down on my arrow it allows me to move this up and down when i press the keys right okay so the next thing we're going to do is in order to be able to sit there to press a like button to be able to like move over to the next level is what I have is where I'm going to get a reference to that selected option and then I'm also going to get a selected option and I'm going to get a uh, switch on it which I'm going to be setting up and I'm going to have a play 2d sound now for me I have a delay of 0.5 per seconds the reason I have a delay is because I want the audio to play when my player actually clicks the button which right here you'll see that it's a different audio sound it's this sound right here when they press a button press to go to the next level and then from there basically i'm getting a reference to restart level now restart level is just a custom event so i just right click and then i type in custom event and i just name it to restart level and now what i'm going to be getting i'm going to look for open level by name and then right here what you want to do is that you want to input the name of your level you want to make sure that the name of your level is spelled correctly if not you'll get a bug and then i just have a print string to let me know that i'm going over to the new level now the same thing is can be done for main menu which is is a custom event and then it's just open level and then i just have it set to main menu right so then once i do that it's going to be i'm going to be getting the same logic that i use above but except for above i just have restart level and then down below i'm just going to get the reference to my main menu custom event so once i do that and i go back to my level and then i go ahead and i press to open up my ui and i press space again you'll see that it goes ahead and restart the level if i scroll down it goes ahead and goes back to the main menu so that is how you create interactive ui elements in your game it's super easy super simple if you guys found this tutorial to be very useful and very informative make sure you guys hit that like button make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you guys are running to any issues Check out the Discord link down below in the description. Join the Discord. You can hit me up on Discord. I'll be able to help you with whatever issue that you guys are running into. Or if you guys want any other specific tutorials, let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys like the video as well as subscribe to the page. Or your notifications turned on so you don't miss an upload. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one.